Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm back sooner than expected because as you can see I'm snowed in here a bit and a couple of interesting things happened at the same time. So what better time to make a video in this time of year, slow, boring anyway, can't go outside really safely, not, at least not today. And a couple of goofball things happened on the uh, world we explore here, which is the alt propulsion and the UFO secrecy, uh, technology secrecy, it's not a beat, but it's a, that's a, pretty much uh, mostly what's, what I'm talking about here. So this stuff, this is real inside baseball uh, here today, folks, even for this crowd. Because uh, if you just walked in here cold, you should go and look at my other uh, videos first before you listen to this one. Because this is going to assume you know who a lot of people are, you know a lot of backstories. When I say you had to be there, you probably were there, or at least you know all about it. So uh, it's kind of, uh, this one's not for everybody, I don't think. But for some people, they're going to... Uh, it, it, it's, it is for them. You know who you are. So, let's get started. I usually start with the thumbnail, which I make first to inspire me. Well, real world events have inspired me, and you can see them right on there. And uh, all I did was take somebody else's beautiful artwork describing the <clears throat> lunacy that's going on in this little world. And, uh, well, I added a little embellishment to it, those paper clips, uh, which I will explain later. For, for now I'm going to give you the overview and explain what I'm going to explain later. Because I have uh, an outline for myself, so why shouldn't you have it to know where you're going? So, overview, thumbnail, we did that. Thumbnail, dimensions, warp drive, time travel. All this stuff has come up this week. And it's causing uh, grief with, uh, shall we say, the more mainstream scientists and mathematician types that are on the fringe of the, our fringe where we meet the real world, or shall we say, the more mainstream world. We think we're more in the real world in some aspects, but uh, we'll leave that for later. So um, let's see. The overview. First, we'll have the opening incantation, which some of you will have seen before. Then we're going to talk about interdimensional beings, talked about by UFO whistleblower to Congress, and all over the news if you pay attention to it. And then we're going to talk about talk of UFOs that are 40 foot long that the uh, government has, but if you walk inside, they're the size of a football field. Now that... When you hear that stuff, even the fringe of the fringe of the inside of the fringe, you know, starts rolling their eyeballs, okay? So that's kind of where we're getting, getting uh, what's causing this uh, video. Then we're going to get into Mr. Weinstein's. He's probably a doctor, though, right, folks? I don't know. He doesn't go by it, but, yeah, he's a Ph.D. He goes by that. Um, scathing comments. And my prediction of them months ago, as soon as I saw this stuff, and yes, it is an I told you so, and I will, I'll pat my back now and probably again later, but look, that's what you're here listening for, right? You know, so much for me, I'm just the one that saw this coming. He's the one that has to do it, and he did it with some funny AI cartoons here that are hilarious. So um, when I saw that yesterday and see a snowstorm coming, okay, and plus, I like my new camera so much. I'm so clear. I want to play with it. So, because sometimes they don't have time. So, uh, then we're going to go on to other commentators, commentating on his comments. Then we're going to go into the real world a bit with our friend Josh Bertrand over at UFO, uh, Korean UFO on Twitter. You will find him easily. This stuff will all be linked. Everything I talk about here will be linked. So you can dig into it more for yourself. And uh, he will talk about aerogel. Well, we will talk about him tweeting about aerogels, vacuum drones, and the like. 
to these same Congress people that, and he's doing it, talking directly to them via a journalist named Matt Laszlo, who should get a, get his name mentioned here. Um, uh, and he's telling them, hey, you know, maybe while you're uh, thinking, I can have a moment to not think about multidimensional whatever, you can think about what really might be floating over from China along with balloons because they are balloon-like aerogels and vacuum drones and the like. They could be cylindrical. They could have been shot down. Are these spy things flying over us now? Are you being distracted by people telling you to look for multidimensional stuff, which admittedly is more interesting? Admit, you know, that's why, that's why the funny cartoon is on my channel here. Instead of, you know, <clears throat> perhaps a vacuum drones, which are just as interesting. And the point is, they're probably more real at this point and, and at least as worthy of Congress's attention as uh, multidimensional beings that people are making fun of. Okay? And perhaps rightly so. So, uh, then my comments on his comments, then my summary of the whole thing, what's really going on here wrap it up a little bit and uh, let you think about it see we see if you agree with me comment either way if you want to then we're gonna skip into part two which has to do with those uh, paper clips on that that I photoshopped onto Weinstein's hilarious cartoon because that has to do with a, a, an article in nature about Albuquerque I'll just say Al Bukeri, a uh, warp drive, and how that was inspired by a television show, and how the author's trip on the subway, where somebody probably dressed like this guy here in this uh, clown suit on the subway was bothering her, and said he had a magic uh, paper clip that if you unwind it, It'll inspire future generations to invent the time machine. Now, this is nature, which is a maybe the most prestigious science journal. You know, they're slipping in recent years. Let's face it, they're woke and stupid, like most people are, because it's a trend right now, but it'll go away. It already is over there. But, um... So we can't, you know, we don't know whether to take them seriously or not, let's face it, unless it's a hardcore scientific report about something very dry, which they can't pervert with stupidity, take it with a grain of salt. So we don't know if it's satire or not, but it certainly raises the question of nonsense in science, even in the nonsensical side. Fringe of the fringe within nonsense wrapped in more, uh, you know, Woo, I guess. So, um, that's what we're going to do. Then we'll do the closing incantation, or at least refer to it. I don't know if you need to hear it twice. And it's not for me, fortunately, so you get to hear somebody else. So, let's go over to it. Let me put on my headphones and adjust the uh, screen here so you don't see me anymore. Well, you see me tiny. I am tiny, though, so that's fine. So now all we're going to do is go over and look at the sacred incantation, which we should ser take seriously here, everybody here, all kidding aside about fringes and sides of the mainstream and everything else I just said. Let's listen to this guy. Where is he? Here he is. You all know him. Let's listen, shall we? From my uh, contacts and so on, uh, I, I think, although there will be enough information coming out to finally lay to rest, that this is not a tinfoil hat subject, and there's a reality to it, and uh, <clears throat> the government is making a concerted effort to, to uh, learn more about it. Um, <clears throat> I think any truly deep state increased knowledge is likely not to come out. 
I don't see all the barriers falling. Understand. Understood. From my uh, contacts. Understood by all on all sides with every ax to grind. So that said, let's get started. What happened? All right. Well, we had the uh, hearing. See, this is why I have to be on inside baseball. To, cause to explain this, you may as well walk into the middle of Big Lebowski like a child and start asking what's going on, or even Lawrence of Arabia, for that matter. So we had a hearing. Let me skip around here. We had a hearing. Well, we might as well listen to Anna Paulina Luna and see what she said. I think it's incredibly important to listen to the specific words that Grush uses. You know, Grush never said extraterrestrial or alien. He said interdimensional. It has become apparent that there is a movement, whether it's within the intelligence intelligence community or not, to prevent us from finding out more information on this. Luna would not expand when asked what interdimensional meant, whether this was something which could bend time and space. Other lawmakers accused the government of deliberately trying to keep Congress in the dark. They send us bureaucrats who don't know on purpose. I'll put it that way. If I wanted to put any doubts here at rest, I'm sure there are people who can or cannot do it, and those are the not people we're offered up. All right, just to be clear, that was town hall fair using fox which i am fair using now and everyone here should know what that is especially youtube algorithms where where's my little my little uh disclaimer so that's what that was so that was perfectly legal i don't do that too often but uh i don't want to get kicked off of here well I'm a, what would i get a strike and they get to put a commercial on that says watch fox news and all 25 viewers will have to see it. You know, big deal. But, okay, so she says that. Interdimensional beings. Eh? This, Grush is the whistleblower. See, this is a long story. This is why we can't tell the whole long story. He brought it up back in June. And when I saw it, I said on Twitter, which was probably t- still Twitter or maybe not X. Those words are in, are interchangeable here, folks. Does he mean string theory or just the woof, which makes no sense, except when you read it, it's not funny listening to it, the woof dimension of plain old-fashioned regular normal quantum physics. Wait till Weinstein gets a load of that one. All right, so a week later, he did get a load of it. Where is he? Uh, so he does, and I get my, uh, you know, okay, there it is. So a week later to the day, he says, for the record, Eric Weinstein, how could I forget his first name? For the record, I have no idea what people meant mean when they say these things. I am genuinely focused on the accessibility of extra dimensions, both spatial and temporal. And I have zero clue what people are talking about with aliens from other dimensions. It sounds like nonsense. Well, go look up his uh, resume and you'll see why that is a statement with more weight than a tinfoil hat me. Who agrees with that, but just not as deeply because I don't know it as deeply. I know enough. I've read enough. I've seen enough from the top science writers whose names I've mentioned before, but I won't mention now, who I rely on. And, uh, you know, there's no evidence for it. There's some theory, maybe kind of, even that's highly, uh, you know, disputed. And, you know, it's, it's just not a, I hate to say it's not a thing, because it could be a thing. And mathematically, it is a thing on paper. But in real life, it's very far from real, even to the fringe. And I realize that I'm, you know, cutting edge or fringe or depending on you know, how you want to frame that, positive or negative. Uh, but not, uh, you know, not like that. No, I it was an engineer and lived in the real world with constructability and all that stuff for a long time. Uh, so that's where I'm coming from. I, you know, 
I, I like imaginative things, but, uh, you know, sometimes the rubber has to hit the road. So, so Weinstein, did I say Stein? Oh, gosh. Stein, um, he makes that comment back in June, and then it goes quiet for a while, you know. We bring it up now and then, people bring it up again. But then it came out again last week, as we just heard from the congresswoman. So <clears throat> this is going to really get his goat, uh, apparently. I mean, they got it last time in June, but uh, I congratulate him for his curiosity on this, because so many are so incurious, especially those with his kind of credentials. So he comes out this week on Twitter and says, I have no idea, zero, what is meant by interdimensional beings. Despite a PhD in the relevant subject area, I have been looking at this for four or so years, and it is total garbage to my ears. He can't hack it anymore, he, so he had to make an AI cartoon. And, uh, you know, open up the issue, so he's going to get answers like this. Second tweet, it's such an insult to the intelligence of the world's premier scientific community that we have heard zero from particle theorists. We have heard from zero particle theorists, general relativists, mathematical physicists, or different geometers. It's not that I can't imagine things that fit into this phase, but etc. and so forth. Now, he gets into a lot of detail here. I'm not going to you can read for yourself. It's all linked below. I'm going to eyeball skim it in real time. He said words like garbage level language that doesn't mean anything come out. And uh, yeah, he's, he's, um, he's laying out his grievances here. He's airing his grievances a month after uh, Festivus. And, uh, you know, he's got, a, he's got some good complaints here. And he admittedly uh, calls it a rant, which it is. But it's all, uh... wow, listen to him. This is great. I could have written some of this. We are becoming a laughing stock and it's totally self-inflicted. And then he mentions Afghanistan, Harvard, string theory, and the southern border. Uh, you know, may as well get air all the grievances at once. And here's the hilarious cartoon we saw before. The Super Duper Secret Squirrel Skiff Club. Which I'm sure he wishes he could get into, don't we all? Or many of us. So he's, uh, he sums it up, I guess, by saying, this is either BS, intelligence community fakery, or technical at the highest level. Absence of relevant experts tilt, tilts toward the former. Right, it could be fakery, or if, it's re if, that, if something like that is real and you're hiding it for national security, I mean, you... you It's, it's beyond it's beyond clown world you know if it's something less prosaic such as things that I have suggested hint wink then I can see hiding it and maybe you know but is this a shiny object I don't know I think that's what he's getting at isn't it maybe I will chime in on that later and I guess he's got 500, what is it, 256 responses to each of three, 600 on that one. So a lot of people are weighing in. And uh, that's where we're at with this. So then I weigh in here, I guess. I did, yeah, I, I did repeatedly. On his thread, most of the stuff that I had to say on that was smart alecky. And funny, her attempts at humor, like how that guy looks like young Einstein, who most of you are probably not old enough to re many of you, some of you, are not old enough to remember this flash in the pan thing. But it was funny for a moment when it came out in the uh, 80s. I don't know. 
and um, and I made a couple of other off comments like that on his thread. My substance stuff is later, and we'll get to it. Uh, so here I am. Well, I already told you about this part. This is the part where I predicted this coming from him a week before he started it. And here he comes back again. So, of course, there's the self-congratulatory aspect of it. But also, if you follow this, how can you not see it coming? So here are other commentators. Je Jeremy Riss, also known as Alien Scientist, says that speculation about advanced physics is the only thing that will bring us into the future and help us understand. Because these uh, diversions here, and he's quoting, uh, quote, tweeting Eric Weinstein, these kind of diversions are just going to cause, you know, a lot of uh, distraction. So he's, Jeremy's saying, keep your eye on the ball, and I agree with that, and I am doubling down on that and confirming it, and etc. But on the other hand, who is Axel Ross Rod? Go kick rocks on Twitter, well known over there, is rightly chimes in with jokes about jokes, which this can be seen, you know, that, that's the problem with this. It's an, an opening for the uh, people to not take it seriously and put it back under the rug. And if they're supposedly sitting on high-tech technologies and big revelations about aliens and for God's sake, extra dimensions, I don't think God would mind a mention on that. Because that, that's, you know, that <clears throat> you're bordering on supernatural, okay? So, depending on how you define these things. But that's how most people would define it. Uh, anything beyond the physical universe. Like a scientist like Weinstein might just say, say, yeah, that's what supernatural, that's what metaphysics is. That's beyond our scope. And rightly so. So, if it's just a cheap distraction, congratulations, you bought two weeks or whatever it was. But uh, people like Jeremy and myself and Joshua Bertrand, we're not going to back off on this. Because we think in terms of real nuts and bolts that could be and will be and should be and have been in the past people working on and maybe fly, flying, floating over our skies now by our fellow human beings that are just a little bit more on the ball than some of the imbeciles in Washington. It, you have to consider it. So... Where does that go? We end up with mockery? No, we move on to what I just said. Joshua Bertrand trying to break through the wall of interdimensional uh, aliens through this, this journalist, Ask a Paul, whose real name is Matt Laszlo. That's just his his uh, site's name, and this guy, Joshua, also known as Korea UFO, it gets a little confusing. See, that's why you need a scorecard, and you can't walk into the middle of the movie. I can't go backwards and explain it all. But those of you watching in the early days know exactly what this stuff is. So Joshua's trying to say, hey, you know, in addition to this interesting stuff about 40-foot flying saucers that when you walk in, it's the size of a, I've heard, football stadium, and I've heard football field. And all that does is give me weird dreams in the morning about five minutes before you're waking up. You know when you have that those little non-sequiturs when your brain's waking up and it's trying to <clears throat> quit dreaming or whatever and get into the real world? Although sometimes problems are solved there. But this is sitting in there, annoying me to wake up and plug in the coffee. So imagine what it's doing to a guy like Weinstein. I mean, have mercy, folks. I can put it out of my mind in a few minutes. 
this has been riding on him since June and maybe before. And the guy has a whole, whole theories about mathematical structures of the universe and beyond. And he knows them all from everyone else, inside out, where dimensions are and are not. So, you know, I have a hard enough time in three dimensions with a clock ticking, all right? So, that's, you can see why the guy might get out of sorts. But, gotta love those cartoons, though. Those were inspired. So, back to Joshua here. He's giving these people these, and he's got them all copied on here these congresspersons of note and uh, that are involved. And, uh, you know, he's telling them, look, this stuff, some of this stuff could be actual spy balloon, uh, advanced flotation and vacuum balloons and aerostats and aerogels and the like that, can, that, are, that are in existence now by our rivals so uh, aside from the uh, fun part of trying to solve the mystery of the hidden nuts and bolts and the bigger mystery of hidden dimensions how about we not get spied on by the chinese again jeez what a what a so he goes on and starts talking about, you know, configurations of this potential spycraft that might exist now, and suggest that they look into that as well, in addition to uh, multidimensional aliens. So he describes in detail about what could be going on here, and it's all very plausible. And if Weinstein hears this, he ought to look into that too. Just eyeball it and see that buoyancy sorry, it's something we should be looking at. I say we take it to the extreme. That's another story on another for another time. But right now, in reality, this could be happening now in its nascent stage. In other words, our rivals are ahead of us. So, I think that makes the point, maybe. And Joshua goes into... Yeah, it's not a short story, but he ends up, I couldn't say it better than this. He wrote it for me. This information was meticulously compiled from open sources. In other words, we're not talking about mysteries here. We're putting together puzzle pieces, but they're not made out of interdimensional uh, dimensions and, uh, and the like. So, there's the two cents on that. Now back to Borat laughing at everybody. Right? He's perfect for this. What's he say? He, uh, where is it? It's too funny. I gotta, I gotta read it. Because it does amuse us Americans when the Brits say, and that guy was funny. I'm sure he still is. Interdimensionals is all demons and stuff in it. That's his cab driver character. London cab driver. Well, he could have passed for New York, too, I guess. Yeah, I could have, but I think he was London. But, yeah, well, it's funny. So, oh, yeah, okay, all right. So, I'm setting up for this video. Line up the tweets. Put the windows in order. Write it down. Practice a little bit so you don't open up in the wrong window first and all that. Music. Test the camera, all that stuff. It gets easier. But right then I'm doing that and I start getting some emails, science emails I get every other day or something. A bunch of alert, email alerts from the cutting edge of science. You can, anyone can get them on Google Scholar. You just type in your keywords, and it'll spew out your stuff for you if you're interested in it. So from the chat, how timely is this? When I'm looking at Joshua's stuff trying to figure out what to say. From the Chinese Journal of Aeronautics. Here's a new article. 
conduction convection coupled heat transfer around a hollow cylinder under different buoyancy forces. Now, I don't, some of you know that a hollow cylinder is a rumor about the that one of the spy balloons that was shot down and now it's all the information's buried by the government and hidden and another cover up happening in real time only worse you know and all that they were talking about hollow cylinders and we know the balloon was from uh, China so if here it comes from the Chinese did I say that part yet the Chinese Journal of Aeronautics Congratulations for being on the ball, Chinese journal. Conduct in the people looking into this stuff over there. Conduction convection coupled heat transfer around a hollow cylinder under different buoyancy forces. Now, if that hollow cylinder, just to get started, okay, we're just getting started. That's not a tic tac yet. Listen to me, I'll tell you how it becomes that way. And Joshua was telling you how it could be that way right now with existing technology because if you put that if that cylinder is a vacuum like a vacuum balloon go look at his stuff if you don't know what I mean by all this and you're heating and cooling the surface with a conduction convection coupled heat transfer thing then it's going to make it go up and down like a balloon and maybe left and right. You heat this side, it goes that way because the Earth is spinning this way and vice versa. Where you heat the top and it goes up to the bottom, flips around, spins over there because, you know, the moon's over here today. That part we don't get yet. I don't, you know, you, that's, you're going to need computers for that and all that stuff. It's not, you're not going to get free energy and flying cars overnight. But this is how you are going to get them. Mark my words. All right. And there, there's, there's, there it is right there. Tweets coming out today. They don't even hide it. So, this, yeah, this is confirmatory stuff for myself. People like Joshua, who's trying to tell the Congress about it. While meanwhile, they're getting stories of interdimensional aliens. So it gets a little frustrating um, for those of us following this. I should include Jeremy in there as well, who's dis also distracted by other things because he's been following other technologies for, uh, you know, 20 years. So, uh, you know, it, it, and Weinstein, how long has he been doing his dimensional math? It get, it, you know, it bothers people. And they react. So here we are reacting. Now, what's next? Um, okay, I think we're winding down off of this part of the video. And we're going to try to end it up with a, a positive note about that meeting in the double secret skiff where they heard some stuff that's kind of questionable. And uh, here's some good stuff. Laszlo reports, quote, this is the first real briefing we've had, unquote. Jared E. Moskowitz, he's one of the congressmen, says, adding it's the first time the IG let member, intelligence, oh, inspector general, let members know where they land on the merits of Grush's claims. He's the whistleblower, a UFO whistleblower. It's saying extra dimensions, crashed UFOs, advanced technologies, and all that stuff. All they learned inside from intelligence IG is classified. And he says the info, act, quote, actually moved the needle, unquote. Now that's good, okay? Yeah, he might have thrown in interdimensional as a one item, but, they make, but it's the big sensational one that got, got traction. For all we know... On the inside, um, you know, things might lean more toward our way of, of, of looking at this. Nuts and bolts. Simple stuff like I just showed you that the Chinese are already doing. Stuff that I've beaten to death on my other videos and will continue to of what could be 
what is and what could be, those are not... Uh, what is and what could be using nuts and bolts, I would think that's what Jeremy is trying to say. We should focus on that to push this thing. Other people have other agendas. Like I said, I never saw a flying saucer. They either exist or they don't. I think they do. I never saw an alien. I don't like government cover-ups, but there's, there's other ones just as bad, in my opinion. Off the book spending, all that stuff. Yeah, it's all, everyone has their own angle. Um, and life's too short to worry about every angle. So, where was I going with that? I, I don't know. I forget where I was going. But, yeah. Yeah, I was there. And, and actually, I do sum it up in a tweet coming up. So, where is that tweet? Is that the very end? Or did I stupidly lose it? Um, it was on a, yes, okay. Here's me trying to summarize it. So, and this is at the end of the tweet thread Joshua sending to these Congress persons. So, Chinese balloon-like objects could be floating over nuclear launch facilities at this very moment while our leaders are chasing extra-dimensional stories that will almost certainly remain buried deeply for decades, if true. Wow. I'd hate to see our present-day security jeopardized like that in combination with, on, with ongoing unauthorized obfuscation of the existence of world-changing, albeit less sensational, all I can give you is 99% of the speed of light, folks. That's it. Maybe more later. Maybe. But that's all I can give you now. And the spy balloons you've been given. And the cylinders you've been given. And the past cover-ups you've been given. By Jeremy. Albeit less sensational technologies by shiny red herrings that were perhaps planted or simply misunderstood because the scientific community will certainly play right into it, as predicted, and as we are seeing right now. So, who knows what's really going on? I don't pretend to. I may play up one side or the other, but I, who knows? One day it's, one day I think one thing, one day I think the next. I think a lot of people are like that, but I like this tweet. I think it's a good snapshot in time, whether it turns out to be based on ignorance or what. I don't know. Shiny red herrings that were perhaps planted or simply misunderstood. Yeah, just go to the nuts and bolts, folks, please. At least give equal time to that. I think it'll even out once this stuff starts getting less and less controversial. The priorities will level out into practicality. Yeah, you want to know if there's extra dimensions. But if you think they're going to show you that one, over, you know, well, I, but I don't know, do I? Not really. No one does. But we'd like people to look at every possible possibility. Because I don't see how you're getting free energy out of extra dimensions in this lifetime for anybody that's alive. But I can see it with stuff like this happening today. Predicted right here. All right, now we're going to shift into the second part of this unhinged no it's not it is I, I hope it isn't but you have to shout to get people's attention sometimes so all right so this stuff's going down with Weinstein and you know I'm just shaking my head right 
shaking my head, waking up with that five minute before wake up dream of how do you fit extra dimensions into a 40 foot gizmo? You know, so I guess that's first world problems though too. Ooh, that was that almost sounded PC. Forget that. That's everybody's problem. But I'm fortunate that I'm able to uh, contemplate it. All right. So the same the same day, and I think I put that on Axelrod's tweet. The same day that she's got that that Weinstein says that says that. She's cracking jokes about it with uh, Borat, which are hilarious. The same day, this prestigious nature journal, which we're supposed to take seriously, Gravitas, but it's turned into some, you know, a lot of stupid PC, a lot of stupid woke garbage recently, and even the scientists admit it. This, you know, if they have uh, tenure, they will. But it's, uh, you, know, you don't know whether to take it seriously or not. The reports, yeah. Well, I already mentioned that part. I won't repeat myself, I guess. Unless that, unless that was in practice. You can't throw the whole thing out, but it's, you know, here we are in the opinion section, which is usually garbage. But, um... Something funny and relevant to this comes up. So you have Weinstein mocking this thing. Borat mocking this stuff. You have clown cartoons that everybody enjoyed and laughed at. And then you have this paperclip article from Nature. The Al, Al Kuberi Key. Now, Al Kuberi is the guy that came up with the, uh, well, he's the most well-known one that has a warp drive equation and theory. And he got it from Star Trek, okay? Uh, you know, I've mentioned this before, that it seems like a kind of, I don't want to call it a hint against history or a tell against fate or anything. You know, a guy was... I saw a television show with an imaginary thing in it and he tried to make an equation out of it but pe my point is people take it they focus on this alone sometimes too much that's my point and she goes on I think I think I think this writer who I will refer to as she her name is Jessica Brook. And she writes a little story about getting on the Washington, D.C. Metro. And a guy who looks like this speaker sits down beside her, and you can read it yourself. I'm not, I'm not going to, don't quote me verbatim on what she's saying, okay? This is a characterization. And he's a typical character you know it's i used to ride the new york city subways every day for 10 years so you don't know sometimes if you're sitting down beside young einstein or a complete kook and they start talking to you well this guy is from the future and he says i know this may come as a shock but I am from the future, and I'm here to give you your mission. So he was crazy as he looked. I glanced at the subway map. I had five more stops before I reached my destination, which meant I might have to deal with him for 40 minutes or so, I sighed. I know it sounds insane, he said. Swear word. Bat-ish insane. And it doesn't help me that I'm dressed like this, but as you can see, I'm hiding in plain sight from the agents of the Time Ministry. The man gave the crowded train car a furtive glance. I have the device in my pocket for your mission. Let me show you. Was this some kind of internet 
plank? A TikTok, maybe. I looked around at the other passengers to see if anyone was filming me with their phones, but no one seemed to notice me or the man. They are all staring out the windows at their electronic devices. Proper DC metro etiquette. I'm going to keep reading. The man fished around in one of the voluminous pockets of his kimono. Suddenly, the train stopped. The train lurched sharply to the right. I grabbed the top of the seat in front of me. Contents flew out of the man's pockets. Nail clippers, an open bag of potato chips, and a couple of rubber balls that went bouncing around the train, much to the squealing delight of the children on board. The man clenched his hands shut. Oh, good, I didn't drop it. He opened his fingers and held his palm out before me with a reverence, showing me the blue paper clip. In hushed tones, he said, I stole it from the time ministry. Here, take it. Not knowing what else to do, I allowed the man to place the paper clip in my hand. Be very careful with that, he said. With the paper clip? I added dryly. It may appear as a mere paperclip to the untrained eye. It was made to look that way to hide, hide it, but it is actually an L. Kuberi key. My eyebrows raised. What the hell was that? An Al Bukeri key? And why was I talking to this guy? Should I keep reading? Yeah, I think I will. If you decide to accept your mission, he said, unfold the key into a straight line. You will open a door through space-time. Time will alternately shrink and expand around you. You will be taken to your pre-programmed destination faster than the speed of light. But you must be careful. He leant, as in leaned, he leant in close. I wrinkled my nose at his stench. The device is still in development. The ministry was working out the quirks when I stole it. It's worked for me so far, but I must warn you, if you activate the key, there's a very small, extremely unlikely chance that it will break the entire universe. But it probably won't do that. Probably. Probably not. A paper clip. I said again. The train screeched to a halt. Speakers dinged above, announcing the train's arrival at the next stop. The doors opened. Passengers shuffled out. And without, an without another word, the man got up and made his way out the door, his yellow duck slippers squeaking as he went. The door shut. The train started again. I stared down at the blue paper clip in my hand. Maybe it was just my imagination. But it did gleam when I held it at a certain angle in the light. I glanced at the map again. I was now four stops away from my destination and had about 30 more minutes to kill. I shrugged and began to unfold the paper clip. The end. And then below it explains you have to read it for yourself. I'm not a f but it ends up saying and at the top she calls it you really can't tell. You really can't tell if it's this is good, whatever it is, it makes you think. It's called it's subheaded mission improbable. So is she taking a shot at Albuquerque, saying it's improbable, but the, who knows, you know, that doesn't mean it's impossible. Don't know. But what she says at the end is, what's interesting is, and this is not in the story, the story's over. What's interesting is that the Al Kuberi stated in an email to William Shatner that his theory was directly inspired by the term warp drive used in the Star Trek used in the show Star Trek, Al Carey also cites the term in his 1994 article, 
the warp drive hyperfast travel within general relativity. This just goes to show how important science fiction is in the development of scientific thought. So is this satire or is she being completely serious? The question is, I don't know. Peewee. So I think that question uh, might apply here somehow. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. Well, honestly, I, I don't, you know, every, I've read it, every other time I read it, she's saying it's, in, although it's improbable, it's good to spark the imagination. I guess we all agree with that. So maybe we'll close out on that bit of agreement. But first, I think we better do the incantation. Let's check the list here first. Because I think we're done, yes? Well, between that and the snow, I guess you can see now why a video is definitely needed here. And before I go, thank you for your time if you listened. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, but being a Catholic, <clears throat> you know how I love my rituals and incantations. So let's hear it again because it applies all the way around to everybody that might ever be interested in this from all sides, all interests, all curiosities, answers that are to questions that have never been asked. Question, you know, I don't know, you know, bottom line is the basement doesn't have an Alamo, allegedly. Now, for the opening, the outgoing incantation. From my uh, contacts and so on, uh, I, I think, although there will be enough information coming out to finally lay to rest, that this is not a tinfoil hat subject and there's reality to it. And uh, <clears throat> the government is making a concerted effort to, to uh, learn more about it. Um, <clears throat> I think any truly deep state increase knowledge is likely not to come out. There you have it folks. I don't see all the barriers falling understand from my uh contact i understand all right thanks for listening short outro see you next time etc and so forth like share subscribe and pause the video control pause